Hello fellow tubers, in this video I'm going to be doing a unboxing of this Panasonic LX7 camera. Now, the reason I got this camera, it has some very neat features and I'm going to name a few straight away. It has Leica f1.4 lens, which is pretty nice to have on the compact camera. It has um, 100 frames per second video in 720p doesn't record audio but doesn't seem to have limit either so that's pretty neat as uh, 60 frames per second at 1080p which is also very nice to have for the con uh, compact camera and it has a ND filter built in but more about that later so that's the box not much on the front not much on the side next I'm going to show you the contents inside then we're gonna run quickly around the camera without the battery to show you the physical controls. And then I'm gonna show you menus and talk a little bit about the performance of the camera. Now, there won't be any sample videos or sample pictures. Sorry about that, guys. You can find plenty of them on YouTube. I just wanted to show my own unboxing since I have uh, hands on this package and just tell you what, uh, what I think about the camera. So let's get started. So, box is out of the way. This is the contents of the package. Basically, you have your charger cable and a charger. For those who are interested, the charger is Panasonic DEA82 battery charger. You also have a basically a neck strap with a little strap there for the lens. I'm going to show that to you in a minute also have a Panasonic battery which I'm gonna need now just to power on camera and it's Panasonic model number DMW BCJ13E in case you want to get another one and it's 3.6 volt 1250 milliampere hours lithium battery you also have a micro USB cable which is a disaster. Uh, it's not really a standard, so you can't use your cable from the phone. It's a bit disappointing, Panasonic. You also have a operating instructions for advanced features. You have some software and you have basic operating instructions. So pretty slim packaging, not too much in there. And that's the camera itself, obviously. Looks like so. Nice looking camera, very solid. Let's start with lens. So you have a lens cap. Now, as I mentioned, you have holes there to attach the strap and you can attach it to the side so you wouldn't lose it. It's not an automatic by any means. Um, you can buy a different one that opens up when you open the camera, things like that. But at the moment, that's what's included. And that's the lens. Very nice, very, um, shallow depth of field 1.4 lens pretty nice to have so starting with lens once again here you have a adjustment for your aperture control very unusual guys now i would be used to kind of adjust my focus here and i really like when it's here so this is not a welcome feature for me you definitely can go through the menus Aperture is not such a big deal as focus. I mean, you'll be using focus all the time. So if you're in the manual focus, this is not the camera for you guys. And here you have a switch basically for the modes. So at the moment, I'm going to be using 16 to 9 ratio. And on this side, you probably can't see, but that's basically manual focus autofocus and autofocus for macro mode. So that's the camera. On the bottom you have a tripod mount. It's on the left side of the camera. Pretty neat because it means you can open this and take your battery out or your SD card out. Um, while we have it open, why don't we put the battery in? And I also have an SD card handy so I can use that card and pop it right in so we're gonna power on the camera in a minute now here you have a HDMI which is micro HDMI and you have that 
USB ports, which also uh, can be an audio video output, if I'm not mistaken, to TV. So obviously you're gonna need another cable. Okay, on top you have the usual mode dial. Pretty hard to switch. If you want to switch to another side quickly, it requires quite a bit of um, force and good grip. So with gloves and things like that might be a bit uh, of an issue. Here you have your white or telephoto, basically your zoom, and you have your picture and video buttons. Video button is a, a recessed one. I like that myself. I don't know about you guys because you basically can press it accidentally. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you can start video with this button once you're in the manual video mode. So it's not an issue if you really want a nice dedicated button. But if you're in another mode, you won't press it accidentally. This is our on off switch. I switched it on. There goes the lens and that's your flash. That's how it looks extended. And if I zoom in, that's at the highest magnification of 3.8. There's obviously various um, digital uh, zooms and things like that, but I won't be going through that because I'm not a huge fan. Let's see, okay, I have to manually put it in. And you have a couple other buttons. I'll just switch that for a second. You have your autofocus lock, you have your playback, the usual ISO white balance custom set button, menu set. You have your timer and uh, burst modes. Now, by the way, this camera shoots five frames per second uh, focusing at each frame or 11 frames per second burst in full resolution. It all also shoots raw. Um, there's your display button, there's your quick menu or recycle and back buttons. Here's your ND focus button. Sorry. Yeah, it is actually ND or focus. So it's your ND filter. When you press it, your ND filter goes on or your focus. Now, the reason to have the ND filter is because you have such a wide aperture lens. If you're outside and you, you want shallow depth of field, you can't achieve that with the ND filter. Basically, everything would be blown out, even at the lowest ISO and the highest shutter speeds. So you will need a ND filter and that's where this comes in handy. And focus basically works if you are onto manual focus mode. Once you rock this, it's gonna zoom in and out. I'm gonna show that to you in a minute. Not really a handy feature, but nonetheless. And here you have your shutter speed and also clicks in. Now, I'm not 100% sure about all the menus, guys. If you want to know about that, I suggest you read the manual because I simply haven't used that camera just yet. So that's the outside of the camera. Next, I'm gonna power it on. And I'm back, so let's go through the menus first. And click the menu button here. And we have photo style, that's for your sharpness, saturation, and so on. Picture size, so nine megapixel and so on and so forth. Also the quality, so sorry. The quality is JPEG, JPEG low quality, raw and JPEG high quality and raw and JPEG low quality or just simply raw. Leave it at see this setting for the moment. ISO limit set. Um, you can actually set ISO limit. Now, I'm not sure why is it not allowing me to do that now. But you can set the minimum ISO. So let's say 800 or minimum 400, whatever your preference is. ISO increments. Usually I would set to one third of the stop. Next, extended ISO. Um, leave it off unless you really are desperate to get a picture in very low light. Face recognition, on, off, or memory. The usual thing, autofocus modes and things like that. Now for that, I might need to switch to autofocus. There we go. So we have a dot. We have the usual. Sorry, that's a center weighted, I think. That would be your target and that would be phase detection. Okay, quick autofocus on or off. Lock, whichever one you prefer. Metering mode. Dynamic. That's for your um, high dynamic range and things like that. Multi-exposure. Not 100% sure what that is about. 
resolution, I zoom and things like that, stabilizer on or off, the usual things. Flash, um, red eye reduction and dash, nothing amazing there. Flash synchro, first or second. Adjustments for the flash, so whatever one you want to set, lower or higher. Red eye removal, optical uh, viewfinder if you have one. Aspect bracketing, time lapse shot. You can set every minute 10 pictures or whatever. I haven't tried that function myself. Date stamp if you want and set the clock. Next, we have a motion picture AVC HD or MP4. AVC HD would be sorry, it would be these qualities. So would be 1080p, 1080i if I'm not mistaken, and 720p. Now 1080p would be 60 frames per second. Continue sort of focus on or off again and wind cut if you need one. And here again in the settings, I just literally go fly through them. Now guys, for most settings, you can definitely have a look at the Panasonic manual if you're not sure and if you want to see what they mean or what are the other options. Don't, don't forget to look into that before buying camera. That's uh, some information there. So yeah, basically guys, that's it. If I switch uh, for some of you, video mode would be quite interesting and especially since it's a manual video mode. And for manual video, video mode, we have manual exposure, shutter priority, aperture priority, and program. We also have a high speed video. So for instance, if I take it now, and stop it, if I go to playback, it would play it in slow motion more or less, play motion picture. Now quality is not spectacular, but for 720p, 100 frames per second, it's not too bad at all. Okay, so these are your modes. Basically when you're in a manual mode, you can twist the ring here, and as you see the aperture will change usual Panasonic dial thingy and when I twist this I'll be changing the shutter speed as well and obviously if I press the ND it applies the ND filter and basically you can shoot at the in the highlight high brightness or whatever you call it the basically wide apertures of f1.4 whatever you want and when you zoom in the aperture would change um, however it's still 2.3 so still wide aperture most lenses most kit lenses anyway would be 3.5 the widest so it's not too bad so yeah guys i suppose these are the quick things that I wanted to show you. One last thing, sorry, I nearly forgot, is the focusing. So if I switch here to manual focusing, what happens is I say I pointed at that, and you see as I hold, I zoom in or out. So let's try to focus on that. As you see, it uses digital zoom so it's not the easiest way to focus. However, it does work and it's not too bad. I thought it'd be very flimsy. However, it's slow enough. So you won't skip it. And if you do, the increments are very low. So it's nice and easy. However, if you're shooting video, well, actually let's go to the conclusion and I'm going to talk about these things in there. So guys, my initial thoughts. Now, I did try 720p on this camera before, and uh, I mean 100 frames per second, 720p. 
The video is very usable. It's uh, decent quality. I wouldn't call it high quality. It's okay. Um, most of the functions are disabled, so the camera would be running in automatic mode. Um, image stabilization be off and most of the settings won't be adjustable. You might be able to change ISO, but uh, sorry, uh, white balance. However, I'm not 100% sure of that. Basically, it would run in automatic mode and there would be no audio recording. However, I don't think there's a time limit. I did record for quite a while before and there was no time limit. So obviously, compression is pretty high. It's not demanding on the camera, hence the quality would be just average. Um, the lens, very nice lens in the low light performs very well. Now guys, one thing not to forget, this is point and shoot after all. So it's not a digital SLR where you have really high quality because of the sensor size, you are limited to what you can do. However, for considering the sensor, considering the size and considering you cannot change the actual lens, it's very good performance. Now about the lens, once again, I don't like this control here. This is, to me, it's absolutely useless. I would prefer to have it here and then to focus here. However, once you hold the camera, I would be used to kind of focus around here, focus ring around here. So when it's that close to the camera, it's a bit awkward. However, it's still possible to do and I would prefer focusing ring here instead of there because then in the video you could adjust. But then again, this is point and shoot. So yeah, that's that. Um, sensor being small still produces nice images. However, don't expect anything spectacular. ISO say 800 and more, you would see some noise in the images. Not much, but you would. Um, viewfinder, there's no actual viewfinder at the moment. You can buy as an extra, but it costs quite a bit and even optical costs nearly the same price. So basically, unless you focusing on this camera and want to invest heavily into it, I would say just forget about the viewfinder. It's not going to happen. Flash, uh, it's okay, but quite small flash. Once again, you can buy external flashes, but once again, you're looking at the huge price tags. I don't think it's worth it unless you really like the camera. Um, I have a couple custom modes, which is nice to have on this size camera and in this market and also have a stereo microphone. Now that's pretty much standard on most cameras. Recessed video button is pretty neat. Um, this dial here, it's quite hard to go. It's not as, as swift, so I don't know. I would prefer this to be a bit softer, but again, that's only preference. Same here. It's pretty hard to turn. Nice to have that, but I don't think it needs to be that stiff. And ND filter, really nice thing to have, but nothing special in terms of all the buttons. Buttons there, very standard. Screen is nice and vivid, but one very big disadvantage of the screen is not tiltable or rotatable. So for the camera, for this price, and in this kind of quality bracket competing with Sony RX100, if I'm not mistaken, you would expect a tilt screen. So that's a down point. Another thing, um, while you do have HDMI out, it's very, very limited. One, you cannot focus using the HDMI out, which defeats the purpose of even having one, to be honest with you. Two, you cannot, definitely cannot obviously film with the HDMI live out and you can only view pictures and videos with HDMI live out. So this is what you would expect from really cheap, low um, budget and just an entry camera. You would not expect to see a lack of this feature on um, high end fixed lens camera. So that's a disappointment. It's nice to have tripod mount here, meaning you can access everything. So your battery and the card. You also have an option of running a dedicated accessory through here. So basically you can fix it on the tripod and you don't need to use the battery. So pretty neat. Overall guys, what can I say? Well, for the camera, the, the highest um, of this range camera from Panasonic. I am disappointed. However, 
I did hear there are some very nice deal, or deals of this camera at the moment. Um, so if you do get a decent deal, let's say 300 euro or below, same for dollars, 300 dollars or below, it's worth it. If it's above that, I would recommend you to wait or consider buying something else. Like for instance, Sony NEX5, not N, Sony NEX5A is still on sale and in some places you can find cheaper than this camera much better video quality much better picture quality obviously not as good lens but there's the alternative anyway and it's interchangeable camera nex one uh, interchangeable lens camera with this one isn't so also no audio out so guys um overall i'm not sure where this camera sits now obviously it's not a beginner's camera but at the same time, it's not a professional camera because there's no audio uh, input and there's no HDMI live. So go figure. Anyway, that's my take at the camera. Overall, I think it's nice camera, but overpriced and not really as a high end as it as I as I would expect it to be. If you think differently, leave your comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about this camera. Have if you have one. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video. And as always, have a nice day.